this is Chintam Patel and welcome back to the video lecture series of the fundamentals of machine design. In this lecture, we will see the thermal stresses and strain concepts and uh, we will start with the definition. Uh, one of the definition that comes into the picture when, when you see the ther thermal strain and uh, stress that is natural deformation. Now what is natural deformation? Natural, if you prevent, if prevented, the deformation due to the variation in the temperature is known as a natural expansion or natural, natural contraction. As we all know that if you increase the temperature of any member, then it will try to expand a little bit more. And if you reduce the temperature of that particular body, it will, re it will reduce its dimension. And you can directly narrate that kind of a situation in this diagram. As you can see, uh, the member is fixed on the one side and uh, free on the other side. That is its initial position with the length of L. Now, if you increase the temperature of the body, you will see there is an increase in the uh, length of the body by alpha T into L. How this comes, it will be explained in the next slide. But uh, the body tend to expand uh, freely and uh, due to the variation in the temperature. Uh, we have increased the temperature of the body and that's why the length of the body is increased. So this type of expansion or contraction, both are known as a natural deformation. Natural deformation, free expansion, free contraction, both are the same terms. You, can, you will see this kind of a terms in the entire chapter. So we will see another definition that is nothing but the thermal strain and stress. Now what is thermal strain and stress? As we have seen in the previous definition that if you, uh, if you, do, if you are not preventing the, any deformation, then the body will uh, increase its length or, uh, length or a dimensions naturally and uh, freely. And if the body is uh, free to expand, then there will be no stress generated in the body. And that's why if you uh, prevent the body, then and then body will resist that prevention. And due to the resistance, the body will suffer uh, stresses and or it will be subjected to different stresses. These stresses are known as a thermal stress. So the ratio of the prevented free expansion to the original length of the member is known as a thermal strain. This is the basic def this is like the basic definition of the uh, normal strain. Okay, this is due to the thermal uh, variation and that's why this is known as a thermal strain. Due to the uh, due to which the stresses are generated in the body, if you prevent the uh, natural expansion, then and then the body will re resist that kind of a prevention, and that's why the stresses will be generated. And those stresses are known as the thermal stress. Okay, so as we will take an example by this diagram, as you can see, uh, the body would like to expand a little bit more if you increase the temperature of that particular member and that is known as a free expansion as we have seen in the previous definition. But what happens if you prevent the free expansion of the body and now you increase the temperature of the body. As you can see in the second diagram, the body is prevented on the both side and if you increase the temperature of that body, now the body tends to move, expand a little bit but there is no gap or there is no area where the body is uh, allowed to expand. And that's why the body resists that kind of a prevention, that kind of a both uh, uh, rigid supports. And that's why the body will resist it. And due to this resistance, the stress will be generated. And the main cause of this stress is nothing but the thermal stress, th uh, thermal variation. And that's why this type of a stress is known as a thermal stresses. So this was the basic two definitions. And uh, now we will move on to the next uh, topic that is our formulas which will be utilized for the examples. So, so the ther thermal stress and strain formula will be required to solve the examples. So first of all consider the increment or a decrement in the length which will be denoted by the delta L and uh, if the length is increasing or decreasing due to the change in the temperature then that will be uh, calculated using the equation that is delta L equals to L into alpha into T. Now what are these terms? So as you can see in this uh, slide that L is nothing but the original length of the body. What is T? T is the rise or a fall in the temperature. So we are not denoted it as a delta T. 
it is de it definitely it is a delta t or a change in a temperature it is not a absolute temperature we are taking the change in a temperature because change in temperature is the cause for this kind of a th th thermal stresses and strain and that's why t is nothing but a change in a temperature so that that indicates the rise or any fall in the temperature from the present condition okay or the ambient condition next term is our alpha what is alpha alpha is nothing but the coefficient of thermal expansion now this depends on the material of the member there may be different kind of a coefficient available for different material and that will decide that how much expansion or the contraction will occur in that particular material and that's why if the alpha is more the material will tend to expand more and if the alpha is less the material will tend to expand a little less okay this alpha is a constant and it is dependent on the material only okay so uh, alpha constant should be uh, taken from the material properties so now you as you can see you we have found the value of the change in the length whether it is an increase in a length or a decrease in a length but if you want to find out this kind of a situation in the uh, as an example then you can see in this in this diagram that the we have taken the same example of the previous slide that we have uh, considered a member which is fixed on the one end and uh, which is free on the other other another end and uh, this member is subjected to a uh, increase in a temperature so the temperature variation is applied now that member will try to expand freely okay the, so the expand free expansion should be uh, calculated using the equation of the delta l that is l alpha delta t or l alpha t t is nothing but a delta t okay so if you find out this free expansion if you want to find out this free expansion then you can calculate it as a l alpha delta t now if you prevent this ex, uh, expansion then the stress and strain comes into the picture now if you prevent this expansion then the body will resist this uh, this kind of a prevention and due to this resistance the stress will be generated which we have already seen in the previous slide so first we will define the strain and based on that strain the uh, if the prevention is provided we will calculate the stress so let's move on to the next uh, uh, step that is if the ends of the body are fixed to the rigid supports so its expansion is prevented the compressive strain induced in the body can be calculated as epsilon compressive is nothing but delta l upon l so this is the very basic formula of the strain where the formula is nothing but the change in length upon original length now delta l upon l can be uh, simplified a little bit more like uh, if you put the value of the delta l that is nothing but the l alpha delta t and in the denominator there is only one factor that is l so as you can see the l can be cancelled out from the nominator and the denominator and our final simplified formula for the thermal strain could be written as epsilon c equals to alpha into t now in this case we have prevented the expansion of the member and uh, we have applied the rise in the temperature but what happens when you apply the uh, fall in the temperature and still your member is uh, fixed from both ends okay so uh, the mem if you reduce the temperature of the member the member will try to contract itself okay but you have fixed it but you have prevented the motion of the or the free contraction of the member then the member will resist that kind of a prevention and a tensile compression uh, or a tensile uh, strain will be generated into the member and the, the nature will be different from uh, the one that we have written over here okay now if we want to find out the stress in this condition so the stress is directly proportional to strain and uh, we can calculate the stress from the strain using the simple formula and that formula is nothing but the thermal stress sigma th is equals to epsilon into e as you can see e is the young's modulus or a modulus of elasticity then sigma th is equals to alpha t into e this is the very basic formula of the thermal stress and strain now we will see another one if the supports are yield now what is the meaning of yield yielding means they are subjected to a little bit of a 
रिलीफ और यू कैन से दैट देर इज अ गैप प्रोवाइडेड बिटवीन द रिस्ट्रिक्शन ओके इफ द रिजिट सपोर्ट्स आर प्लेस्ड विथ सम गैप विथ सम गैप कैन बी सीन फ्रॉम दिस डायग्राम देर इज अ गैप बिटवीन द बोथ रिजिट सपोर्ट एंड द एंड ऑफ द मेंबर सो वॉट हैपन्स इन दिस केस वेन वेन एवर यू इंक्रीज द टेम्परेचर ऑफ दैट मेंबर द मेंबर विल ट्राई टू एक्सपांड इट सेल्फ okay so it will expand it will try to expand freely but what happens it can uh, it can narrate the free deformation in the gap okay the gap which is provided between the support and the end of the member but what hap what happen later on whenever the gap is filled with the member body then the support are fixed and that due to this fixed support the body cannot uh, expand from that particular extreme limits and that's why uh, the body will face the resistance from that particular point initially the body was free to expand and to fill the gap but later on after the uh, filling the gap the body will face the resistance and this resistance is the cause of the uh, res uh, is the cause of the thermal stress so the thermal stress will be generated after filling the gap so during the gap filling there is a no stress generated in the body and that's why we have to subtract the deformation du during the gap because the deformation during the gap is pro contributing uh, the very less or the zero uh, value in the thermal stress generation okay and that's why what we will do we will subtract the gap value from the deformation and as you can see the free expansion is prevented Uh, uh which is prevented by the fixed support uh, which will be subtracted within the gap as you can see the uh, thermal strain can also be represented by the e value uh, instead of the epsilon both are the same similar notation for the thermal strain and e is equals to uh, free expansions prevented minus gap divided by original length of the bar so if you put each and every values of the uh, Uh, this parameter then you can see that the free expansion prevented can be written as alpha t into l now the gap which is provided is will be given in your example already so you will uh, put that value in this equation and uh, uh, divided by original length of the bar was the capital l so if you put each and every values then you will calculate the value of the actual thermal strain which is generated during the case where the body is subjected to the war the where the supports are yielding okay whenever the supports are yielding you will have to subtract a gap from the free expansion clear now you can calculate the thermal stress value from this calculated thermal strain or actual strain in which you have considered the gap okay so the thermal stress can be uh, calculated using the basic formula of the uh, thermal stress that is nothing but the sigma th is equals to alpha t into e okay now we will move on to the next uh, to uh, topic of this slide that is example based on this concepts now we will see one of the example which were, which has been asked in previous papers uh that is a very basic example but it will clear your basic ideas about the previous uh, concepts of the thermal stress and strains so as you can see the data uh, which is provided in the example is on the screen uh, a bar of a 3 meter long and 20 mm diameter so the length of the bar is 3 meter capital l is provided as a 3 meter and the diameter is 20 mm so the cross section of the bar is nothing but the circular so we have a cylindrical bar okay as you can you have to imagine that particular thing with whenever you are reading the data is rigidly fixed in a two supports so there are two supports and the ends of the bar are fixed within that support at a certain temperature let's say any temperature or a room temperature okay from if the temperature is raised by 60 degree centigrade now from that certain temperature you are increasing the temperature as a 60 degree a little bit 60 degree more whatever the temperature of the room at that time the bar was at 25 degree centigrade let's say for example okay i am not saying that the 25 degree centigrade is given in the data 
but the thing is if the room temperature is 25 then you are increasing the 60 degree more in the 25 then your final temperature would be 85 degree centigrade we don't know the current temperature and we don't require it because we need only change in the temperature and which is given as a 60 degree 60 degree centigrade is raised on that particular member okay so 60 degree centigrade is the change in the temperature which will increase the uh, which will tend to in expand the body and due to that expansion is prevented the body will face the stress in the uh, in the material and that stress is known as a thermal stress okay so the uh, question is that the find the thermal stress okay we, we we need to find the thermal stress and strain of the bar also find the thermal stress and strain when the supports are yielded by 2 mm now yielding is nothing but the providing the gap gap is provided of 2 mm there is a gap of a 2 mm yield by 2 mm means there is a gap of a 2 mm take alpha equals to 12 into 10 raised to minus 6 per degree centigrade and e is also given now what we will do we will take a given data <coughs> like this <coughs> capital l is 3 meter we will convert it into the mm like a 3000 mm okay alpha is nothing but the uh, 10, 12 into 10 to minus 6 for a degree kelvin or a degree centigrade both are the same nothing difference t is given as a 60 degree e is also given now we will start our first step in the first case they have asked to find the thermal stress and strain where the both supports are fixed there is no yielding no gap is provided both supports are fixed and now you have to calculate the stress in order to find out the stress we have the basic formula of the stress which was the basic formula rewind the previous slide or rewind the video and see that particular formula of the basic stress that is nothing but the alpha t into e now if you put each and every values uh, if you put the value of alpha which is also given t is also given and e is also given then you can direct simplify that values in the multiplication and get the answer of the thermal stress that is nothing but the 144 newton per mm square now if you want to find out the thermal strain then the thermal strain and stress has a relation and that relation is nothing but the sigma equals to e that is thermal strain small e and into capital e that is young's modulus the young's modulus is also given and you uh, as you can see there is a only one unknown in this equation that is e that is small e or a thermal strain and that can also be written as a 7.2 into 10 to minus 4 now as you can see this uh, value is having no units because the thermal strain is unit less quantity and that's why you will have to understand that whenever you are writing the equation whenever you are writing any answer then those answers are unit less whenever you are writing the answer of the thermal strain that answer is unit less okay remember this thing when you are uh, finding the answer of the thermal strain now we will move on to the second case that was the case of when the supports were yielded by the 2 mm so 2 mm gap is provided as i said whenever the gap is provided you will have to subtract that gap from the free expansion then what is the free expansion free expansion can be calculated as alpha l into t alpha l into t and if you subtract the gap from that particular free expansion you will get the answer of the expansion prevented that is delta l so delta l is nothing but the alpha into t into l minus gap now if you put each and every values uh, to alpha value t value and l value and the gap is given as a 2 mm as you can see this is a 2 mm then you will find the final answer of the delta l as a 0.16 mm okay now this was not asked in your uh, example they have asked about the thermal stress and strain but you have found out the value of the delta l now you will have to calculate the value of the thermal strain now what is the value of the thermal strain it is nothing but the delta l upon l so if you put those two values from the above uh, calculations you will get the answer of the strain which is also a unit less quantity okay so make sure that you are not writing any vacuum unit like a meter or a mm 
and uh, now we will move on to the last thing which was asked in your example that is thermal stress and thermal stress can be calculated as a sigma equals to E into uh, Young's modulus and if you put these two values you will get the answer as a 10.66 megapascal. So this was the end of our example and now we conclude our lecture over here. In the next lecture, we will see a few more the uh, concept of the elastic constant and continue our video lecture series. Thank you.